So here I am again talking about more of this moon hoax insanity. Why? Because I love talking about stupid conspiracy theories even a third grader could debunk? No, but once again, this lets me talk about subjects I am interested in. In this case, physics and photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is the technique of reconstructing a real-world scene from photographic images. I used it in a previous video to reconstruct David R. Scott passing by the flag and brushing it with his elbow, which the hoax tards say must be flapping in the breeze. This time, we're going back to their other old favorite, the jump salute. As if I haven't debunked this crap enough, by doing a test for comparison, not once but twice, as well as by proving the dust fell at the same rate. But now, XYZ LLLZYX is saying that if the rate of fall is consistent with lunar gravity, then the astronaut must be less than four feet tall. I've showed him my math, and he comes back with nothing. His best effort didn't even use the proper basis for comparison. So let's look at the fall. I'll do two things different this time. I'll look at the entire height of the astronaut's jump, not just the dust height. Remember, I've already established that they both fall at the same rate. And I'll use the same MPEG file that you can download from the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal so that anyone can double check my demonstration. The link is in the video info. The resolution of this file is 352 by 240, with a frame rate of 29.97 frames per second. What we're going to need is two measurements, the entire height of the besuited John Young in pixels, and the height of his jump also in pixels. Here's Young at the apex of his first jump, at frame number 257 of the video file, or 817 in video parlance. The top of the astronaut's pliss is at 24 pixels, counting from the top, and the bottom of his heel is at 159 pixels, making for a total height of 135 pixels, again at the ALSJ file's resolution of 352 by 240. Now according to the Apollo 16 press kit, John Young is 5 feet 9 inches tall, and the suit adds a few inches to that. Remember, the claim is that he'd have to be less than 4 feet tall for this to be lunar gravity. So as long as we get a figure somewhere around 5, 9 to 6 and a half feet, we'll be fine. And he'll be an idiot, of course. Young lands at frame number 279, or 909. Now, the bottom of his heel is at 191 pixels down, so he's fallen 32 pixels all total. Moreover, this took place over a period of 22 frames, or 0.734 seconds. Again, all of these figures are from the ALSJ file itself, so anyone can download the file and verify this. Since he fell 32 pixels and is 137 pixels tall, we know with absolute certainty the ratio of his height to the height of his jump. It's about 4.2 to 1. But according to the principles of photogrammetry, we cannot know the actual size of either without a definitive height reference. Once we find either of these, we can easily calculate the other one. This is where the physics comes in. Lunar gravity accelerates all massive objects downward at 1.622 meters per second squared. We know the time of his fall, 0.734 seconds. So we can easily find out his height with the formula S equals UT plus 1 half AT squared. Since we're starting from the apex, initial velocity is zero, so U equals zero, and the first part of the equation goes away. We plug the other numbers in, and we get S equals 0.437 meters. So we know, with as much precision as we can get with this video clip, that this is the size of his jump. And his real height, including pliss and suit, is 4.2 times that amount, or 1.84 meters. That's right at 6 feet tall. So using some easily verifiable mathematics, we have concluded that the rate of fall in this picture is 100% consistent with being on the moon and 100% inconsistent with the claims of this lunatic. Another hoax tard shot down. It seems like they, like many people, enjoy playing whack-a-mole. But unlike many people, they prefer being the mole.